G'day, welcome back to the Forty Channel. So today, we're gonna to look at something that's pretty important, well, on any car. Stopping. What makes that happen? Your brake lines. Right, so these brake lines are pretty corroded, knocked around, dented, and uh, broken in some spots. So, we're gonna show you the best way of making new brake lines and the tools to use. Let's get into it. Right, there's a few things you're going to need to make your own brake lines. Obviously, you're going to need some brake line. So 316 is relatively available from pretty much any auto shop or online. Grab some of that. Make sure you get um, a good selection of fittings. So we're going to go into a little bit later about the older models. Now one of these cool little contraptions. Now I don't own this, I've actually borrowed it from a mate. Because as you see, your brake line comes all coiled up. Trying to straighten it out so you can get all your bends is almost impossible just trying to straighten it out by hand. This is going to be a lifesaver. Thanks, Drew. Small little tube bender. Now, there's nothing very complicated about these things. Right, oh, your little brake spinner. So, a little crow foot in the end there. 10 mil brake spinner. You're going to need one of them. 17 also comes in pretty handy for the end of the brake lines where the actual hose goes to. Small little adjustable pipe cutter. These are absolutely magic. This makes it so easy to cut it. Gives a nice clean square cut for being able to flare your ends. Your flaring tool. Now there's a couple different types of flaring tools. Spend the extra money, make sure you get one of these. It's a double flaring tool. So what it actually does is it doesn't just flare it straight out like this one does, and it doesn't actually make it very straight or even at all. These are not recommended for brake lines. It actually flares it out and then folds in the lip. It gives a nice clean radius and a beautiful taper that makes straight up to the brake joiners, making it leak proof. So that is what you want. You do not want brake fluid leaking out. All right, so there's our tools are all laid out. Next thing we need to do is if it's possible, Get your old brake line, get it off. Now this one's pretty bent, but it's gonna give us a very good indication of exactly what we need to make. So, so between having the old brake line and your chassis, you can bend up all the pieces you need to basically the exact size you need it. So make sure you keep this. First thing we need to do is we need to pull it all apart so we get all the parts nice and separate. This is where something like your R10 is really gonna come in handy. This stuff breaks the rust down, gets right into that thread that's been rusted in, like these ones are absolutely terrible. Without this stuff, you're not gonna get it apart. You still may even need to use some heat on those really, really stubborn ones. But let's just give the R10 a go and see how it works. Right, so you wanna grab a shifter. This one is actually a Toyota motor shifter. How cool is that? And the shifter's just there, so you can just try to grab hold of one side of it to stop it spinning when you're trying to undo it. The beauty of the brake line spanner is it's, is it's almost a full ring spanner with this little notch cut out of it. The beauty of that is it grabs hold of the end of it without it spinning and stripping it off. Don't try and use an open end spanner, you're only going to strip the end of the nut. Shift it onto there just to try to help it hold it into place. And then we'll try to break it. There we go, we got it. Just be careful, remember that these are brake lines. No matter how old they are, there still could be brake fluid sitting inside them. There you go, like that. So just be aware of that. Right, so after a bit of battling and a bit of R10, we're able to undo all the brake lines. We've got all the pieces here relatively in the correct shape that they came off in the vehicle. From the really small pieces to your really long pieces, they're all pulled apart, which is great. Now, 
This is something that's going to catch some of you guys out on your early model 40 series Land Cruisers. They actually had the thread was M9 by 1mm pitch. Difficult thread to get. The most common size is M10 by 1mm thread. So that is everywhere. You can buy them on eBay, you can buy them from any auto shop, the whole lot. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to convert the whole lot to M10 by 1mm. Right, so you might be saying, that's not the genuine size, Jason, that's not right, but I'll tell you right now, if the future owner has any dramas whatsoever, it's not going to be an issue in being able to get parts and repair this thing quickly. Right, next thing we need to do, so we've got all these little clips. We need to remove all these clips and keep them, so we don't want to lose them because we need them for when we make our new brake line. So we're just going to pull all those clips off. Again, these are pretty rusted on there. So we're just going to work them backwards and forwards, bend them back with a screwdriver and free them. Right now, so we've removed all those little brackets. We want to save them and we want to clean them up. Right now, some rust remover. Now this will just take all that rust off, take it back to a nice clean metal, which means we can paint it and make these things look brand new. So just get a little bit of rust remover. You want to make sure that all your items are completely covered with it. So we get our biggest piece, sit it in, all right, eh? throw all our little brackets in, straight away you can already see the rust remover working, it's eating away at that rust and it's bubbling away, so we'll leave that for about an hour or so, we'll come back and we'll see what it looks like. Right, so the first thing we need to do is pick your piece that you're going to make and we're going to do a pretty rough measurement. We want to, want to overestimate how much you need because you can always trim a little bit off later. Gonna get a tape measure, you get a piece of string and wrap it around and measure the tape, but it's gonna be pretty uh pretty rough already, so don't get too concerned with whether you're right or wrong as long as you've got extra. Right, I'll make that 108. Now this is where your pipe straightener comes in handy. Big giant coil, you're gonna have a nightmare trying to straighten this out, I'm telling you. So just slide it straight in, just feed it through. Look at that. Let's mark out 108. Take your pipe cutter, slip that over the end of the pipe. Spin around, add a little bit of pressure. Give it a turn, add a little bit of pressure. Just keep making a little turn on your knob, which adding pressure. Spin it, just continue the process. Don't go too much at once. Done. Right, so the last thing you want to do is try to tighten up too much in one go, because it'll actually crush your bit of pipe, and you don't want that. Right, so we've got one piece of brake line, nice and straight, ready to go. We'll get our old rusty one and we're going to use this as a template. A little pipe bender. Right, so the first thing we're going to do is just going to lay this down and put it straight over the top of the old one. Pick your first bend. Right, this is pretty simple. You've got three grooves. Use the smallest one for our 3 16th. Sit it in there, pull your handle down, and just slowly bend it down to the angle that you need. And then release it, pull it out. Pretty simple. So there's our old rusty one that uh, we're going to replace. And there is our new one. So I'm pretty happy with that. Very happy with it actually. Now the ends here, you want them just to be a little bit longer. That's why we said it doesn't matter if it's too long. You can always cut off. You can't add to it. So if they're longer, that's good. What we need to do next is you actually need to make sure that it's at least 5 mil longer than your template. And the reason for that is because when you put the flaring tool in, it actually takes about five mil for it to fold it all in and flare it all over. Right, now, so time for flaring. So you want to get your brake nut, 
you want to make sure you put that on first because if you've got a, uh, a piece like this one here, you want to make sure you put on your brake piece first, otherwise it will never go back on. I'm going to show you how it all works on this small piece. Right now this particular one, pretty easy to use, you've got a stopper nut, that stopper nut screws in, push in your brake line. Then we need to screw these lock nuts down. This will hold everything in place. You want to make sure that these are screwed up really tight. Make sure they're nice and tight because the last thing you want is your brake line pushing back when we go to do the flaring. Right, and now we've got this die nut. So we've got two ends. We've got an end that's a nice big taper on it and an end that has a taper inwards. So we want to make sure that inwards taper is our first piece that goes in. This one here has an OP1, so let's call that position one. That's the first one that needs to screw in. So we screw that in all the way. Then we just get our 17mm spinner. We're going to tighten that up so that gap closes up. And right, once it's nice and tight against that front face, we undo it. Turn it around. Screw in our second position. Again, do exactly the same thing. Screw it all the way up. So it comes up hard against this face. Once we're there, back it off. Pull it all apart. And there you can see, beautiful double flare, absolutely perfect. So you slide your nut up, and there we go, it all sits in, seats in perfectly, and that's done. Now without that tool, you would never get that perfect double flare. It's just absolutely, it makes life so much easier just to have that tool. Righto, so that's how that works. Now we can actually do it. In for real. Right, so all these brackets have come up absolutely awesome straight out of that rust remover. It's brought them back to a bare steel, which is really, really cool. Uh, I started filming and it has absolutely poured down rain outside. So, summer storm, but anyway, we can't hang these up out in the sun to dry. So, I'll just hang them up inside the shed. We have a good spray with the Galmax MPR gloss black. That'll make them come up really nice. They'll be ready to go on. That means we've got all the little brackets for our brake lines. The other thing I've done is I've pretty much made up all my brake lines now. They're all made up, all brand new. So we're nearly there. So these brake lines are nearly ready to go on the car. Right, so I've only got one more brake line to make up. That's one for the rear axle that goes over the diff. And that's it. Then we can start reinstalling them back on the car. So we'll paint these brackets up, we'll let them dry overnight. We'll make up the other one, then we'll fit them up. So there you go, using the old one, that was probably the most complicated piece we had to make. We've used that as a template. Now we probably could have reused that, but it's pretty flared out and damaged on the thread here. And I thought, well, everything else is gonna be brand new. So, brand new one it is. This is for the rear. Righto, right. so that's it. All our new brake lines are all made up. That's fantastic. One thing I had to do uh, off camera, which was I had to modify our little bracket. The reason we had to modify that was 
we had to get some custom hoses made up. Now, I ordered hoses the right length, but being 1965, it's tricky because you had the M9 by one thread up here and you had the M11 by one thread here. So to make everything fairly straightforward, we uh, just got some custom hoses made up. They're all the same length, which is fantastic. Two front, one rear, makes it easy. That way you can carry a spare if you need it. Righto, let's fit it all to the chassis and we're done. The copper washer on the end there. Then we can screw it into place. right to all the brakes where they need to be, done custom hoses, a few custom bends, but it is brand new and it is absolutely mint. Right, so there's only one more line to make and that comes from the master cylinder down into the main system, but we're not even gonna look at that until the cab is on and then we're gonna worry about it. So that's it. So hopefully this video has helped you guys out. Right, so if you guys wanna follow our builds, make sure you subscribe to the channel, Check out our TikTok, Instagram, be able to keep up to date with what's going on. Righto guys, that's it for this episode. Righto guys, again, really appreciate your support. And until next time, take care of yourselves.